moment to hop on here and then we'll get started. <clears throat> Okay, well, welcome. Thanks so much for joining me today. I am Tiffany Smith. I'm an instructor with Wilton, and I have got some adorable Halloween cupcakes to take you through today. Before we get started, though, I just want to let you know that today's class is being recorded, so you will be able to go back and review any parts of it um, that should be posted by early next week on michaels.com. I also have with me behind the scenes helping me out today, Karen Johnson, also from Wilton. She's going to be fielding your questions. So by all means, use that chat box and put any questions in there that you have, and she'll give us a hand with those. So let me show you what we are going to be doing today. If you can just switch the camera. Okay, so we have these five different designs that we're going to be doing. Um, these are all actually created using fondant, but first we have to ice our cupcakes with buttercream. So I just want to take you through a couple of tips to, uh, to, to ice your cupcakes. I actually use the Decorate Smart uh, icing that Michaels carries. And this is actually a medium consistency icing. When you're icing cupcakes or decorating a cake, you always want to make sure that your icing is a nice, thin consistency. Um, that's going to help you prevent getting crumbs in your icing. Something else that I think you'll find helpful is using an angled spatula. You can see that uh, there's an angle here that kind of lifts the blade or the, the handle up from the blade a little bit. So when you're actually icing, your knuckles aren't going to drag through your cupcake surface. So how do you know that your icing is a nice thin consistency? You should be able to just stick your spatula in here and then it's not supposed to stand up. Did you see how that kind of just fell over? Um, the icing should not be stiff enough that it's going to support your spatula. So to get it to a thin consistency, there's about two cups in a can this size. I would recommend starting out by adding about a tea spoon of water and then just stir it up and then do that spatula test. If your spatula stays standing, go ahead and add a little bit more water. I would do just a couple of drops at a time until you get to that point where your spatula will not stand up straight. Then what you want to do is always make sure when you are applying the icing that your, your spatula never actually touches the cupcake. You always want to make sure that you've got icing in between that spatula blade and the cupcake surface. And we don't have to go crazy trying to make this look beautiful because all of the tops of our cupcakes are going to be covered in fondant. So you don't have to spend a lot of time getting it really smooth. And if you do get some crumbs in your cupcakes today, this is a perfect project to practice um, icing your cupcakes if you're not really comfortable doing that because we're just going to cover this part up. All right, so that's your lesson on icing cupcakes. Now it is time to open up our fondant. So I'm going to be starting with a fresh box. This is a 24 ounce package. And we're going to be using the white fondant today. We actually have four colors that we're going to be using, but we're going to color the white um, fondant. But just know that you can also purchase the uh, ready to use fondant in different colors, already pre colored. So what we want to do is you can take a knife or a spatula and we just want to divide our fondant in half um, because we want to separate it out so we can color it. So half of this, we're going to just put away. For those of you that have never worked with fondant before, one thing you want to always remember is that once you take fondant out of the package, it does dry out pretty quickly when you're not handling it. So what you want to do is have a resealable bag handy or some plastic wrap or a uh, airtight container that you can just slide that into. We don't even have to worry about sealing this up. Just folding it over and tucking it underneath is enough for now. 
With your remaining half a block of fondant, we're gonna cut that sort of into to quarters. Um, and then each quarter, we're gonna end up coloring a different color. So that's about the size you're gonna want for each color. Now, three of these quarters, I'm gonna tuck away so it doesn't dry out. And then I'm gonna show you how we can color the fondant using icing colors. So I have here some black icing color. Um, this is a Wilton product. You can buy them either in the individual colors or you can buy them in an eight pack at Michael's of assorted colors. You're gonna need some toothpicks to apply your color. Before we add any color, actually before we do anything with fondant, the first thing you always wanna do is just knead it a little bit. So basically you're just gonna start pulling it apart kind of twisting it and folding it. What happens when you first work with it, it should pull right apart and almost look a little crumbly around the edges. But once you knead it a little bit, you'll notice it'll start to stretch more. And that's, that's more the consistency that you want is, is kind of a, a stretchy, um, smooth surface. So that's pretty good. And then we're gonna take our icing color. You would typically use this to color buttercream or royal icing, but it can also be used to color fondant or gum paste. I'm gonna take some toothpicks here and just scoop out some color. We're gonna need a pretty generous amount of this to get the black. And I'm actually going to throw on some food safe gloves. Um, if you don't have food safe gloves, that's okay. The icing color does stain your hands a little bit, but usually it'll wash right out with soap and water. The black though tends to wanna stick around on your hands a little bit longer, even with soap and water. Um, and just because we're gonna be working with some white in a, a short time here, I don't wanna have any traces of black left on my hands. So our colors in there, I've kind of just folded it in and I'm just gonna start kneading it until it's all blended in. So what's nice about these icing colors is they're a gel consistency. Um, if you are familiar with the little liquid squeeze bottles that are available in your grocery store, those aren't so great only because they are liquid. And when you add liquid to fondant, it is gonna change the consistency and make it quite sticky. So the gel is great because it's a, a highly concentrated color. Um, and you don't need a lot, and it's, it's really not gonna change your icing or fondant consistency. I'm just gonna add a little bit more black. You can see it's all blended in. To me, this looks more like a dark gray. So, I'm gonna add just a little bit more. If you don't have the gloves, you can see that I'm kinda just putting this in the center and then folding it in to try to avoid touching that black gel um, directly to your hands that will help avoid getting your, your hands stained. So we're gonna also be using some green, orange, and gray today. Um, I'm just coloring the black in front of you just so we can keep our class at an hour. Uh, you're welcome to color your other colors um, if you're working along with me as you have time here. All right, so that looks pretty well blended. Um, one other thing I wanna mention, when you are adding color to your fondant, if you do need to go back and add more, always take a fresh toothpick because you don't wanna contaminate what's inside the jar. Um, there could be traces of fondant still on that first toothpick that you used. And if you don't contaminate what's in the jar, you'll have a really long shelf life with these colors. They'll last at least 24 months. Okay. So the first design we are going to do is our little zombie here. 
So I'm gonna just tuck away the black for a moment. And then we're gonna take some white fondant to do his, his face. It might be hard to see in the camera, but the, the cupcake, the iced cupcake is covered in a circle of fondant. So that's what we're gonna do next. So I'm just gonna take a little bit of white here. And you don't really need to take a lot. Um, you just want enough that's gonna allow you to cover the cupcake surface. And again, because this is fresh fondant um, that we haven't worked with yet, we wanna go ahead and knead it up a little bit until it's nice and stretchy. And then you wanna make sure that you have a nice clean surface to work on. Uh, fondant does pick up dirt and lint um, very easily. And once it gets in there, it is really hard to get it out. So I'm actually working on what's called a roll and cut mat. This is available at Michael's. I like this because it's a nice non-stick surface. Um, it's nice and smooth. It'll protect your counter when we're cutting in a little bit. If you don't have this, you can just use a silicone mat or a large cutting board if you want. So we are ready to roll out our fondant and I'm gonna be using this fondant roller. Um, this is also available at Michael's. If you don't have one of these, you can just use a regular rolling pin. And whenever we roll out the fondant, you wanna go ahead and sprinkle a little cornstarch or powdered sugar on the surface just to help it so it doesn't stick. I'm gonna roll this out and I do have a little piece of black in there. What's nice about this roller is it comes with these little guide rings to help you achieve a nice even thickness. Um, there's actually two sizes of guide rings. The ones I'm using is for a 16th of an inch thickness. Um, so if you don't have this with the guide rings, you can just go ahead and either try to eyeball it or if you have a ruler handy, uh, you can go ahead and check the height of your fondant with your ruler. Okay, now to cut out our circle, we're going to be using the largest cutter from the double cutout set here that's available at Michael's. So there's six different size uh, circles here, but it's almost like getting 12 in the package of six because these are two-sided. You've got one straight edge and then the other edge is like a, a crinkle edge. We wanna use the straight edge for our zombie because if we use the crinkle edge, we'd have a fancy looking zombie and we want our zombie to look a little more frightful than fancy. So we wanna take this excess fondant and go ahead and tuck that away so it doesn't dry out. And then you could just, actually, you know what, before I put that on the cupcake, we're gonna add some scars to his face. Um, I'll show you on this one here. So we're just gonna go around the outer edge and just add some lines to, to represent some scars. And there's no rhyme or reason to this, just kinda scribble them on. So this is a food writer. Um, I know it looks like a regular marker that you might have in your craft supplies, but this is a special food safe marker. Uh, this is part of a five pack that is available at Michael's and it comes with a black, a red, which we'll be using next, um, a green, a blue, and a brown. Okay, so I just find it's easier to mark the scars before we add the fondant to the cupcake. So because I just iced this cupcake, we don't even need anything to help that adhere to the top of the cupcake. It'll stay on nice just because that's a, a, some fresh icing. Next, we are going to add the little black accents for his eyes. Um, and I'm actually using two different size candy eyeballs today. So we're gonna be using 
one of the large ones and then one from the smaller assortment. Then to get those, um, actually let's get the, the black fondant next. And you don't need a lot of this, just a, a small piece, um, probably the size of a large uh, gumball, um, definitely smaller than a golf ball, a little bit smaller than a ping pong ball. Again, you wanna dust your surface. And we wanna roll this out just so it's big enough to cut two small circles. And I'm gonna then be using the smallest round circle from that same cutter set to cut two circles. And then what we wanna do is kind of make them a little more oblong. Um, you can see here how they, they're a little oblong compared to the actual eyeball. So I'm gonna take the guide rings off of my uh, roller here and just continue to stretch these out a little bit more. That looks pretty good. And then this one, we don't have to do quite as much because that's for the smaller eye. All right. So next we are going to apply those accents to the cupcake. And to do that, I'm gonna be using a little bit of piping gel. So it comes in a container like this, oops. <laughs> um, it's just, it's clear, it's edible, and it really doesn't have much of a taste. When you first go to use it, you wanna stir it up well. And I'm actually gonna be applying it with a decorator brush. Again, and this looks like a regular paint brush, but you wanna make sure that you're using a food safe brush. Um, that you're only using with food products. And then that just sets right on there. Oops. And it doesn't take a lot of piping gel, you just need a little dab. And then we can put his eyes on the same way with the piping gel. Okay, and then all we have left is his mouth to do, and to create the mouth, we're gonna use that same small cutter and cut out another small circle. And then once you have that circle, we're gonna go back with the same cutter and cut a little crescent. So just offset the cutter a little bit, and that will give you kind of a, a crescent shape. And we will apply some piping gel on that. And that gets a little tricky because this is really skinny. And there we have our zombie. Are there any questions on that before we move on to the mummy? Um, I think we're doing good, Tiffany. Okay, let's move along then. Um, wrap up that black fondant so it doesn't dry out. We're gonna need that eventually for the design after our mummy. So this is what we're gonna create next. So what you wanna do is take an iced cupcake. Um, actually, I think I'm gonna use this one instead. And we're gonna start by giving him his little eyes here. And we're gonna use the, the larger of the two sizes. And we wanna make them a little bit scarier. So we're gonna use a red food writer and just draw some lines on his eyeballs. Okay, 
then we can apply that. I'm gonna use a little piping gel on this because this ice cake, I, or, um, this cupcake, I actually iced a couple hours ago, again, just to keep our, our class at an hour. Uh, so it has started to dry a little bit, but if your cupcakes are freshly iced, you should just be able to go and press those eyeballs on gently and they will adhere with no help. But since my icing has dried, I'm gonna just add a little bit of piping gel to make sure that they stay put. Um, and, and try to place those maybe about a third of the way up. Next, what we're going to do is create the bandages that we're going to wrap the mummy in. And what I ended up doing was using kind of a, a marble effect with white and gray fondant. So you'll need some gray fondant to get the gray. You're going to use that black icing color that we use to color our icing black. You're just not going to use quite as much. So I've got some gray here. And then we're also going to mix that with a little white just for some added interest. And to create a marbled effect, what we want to do, first we want to knead this up, make sure it's nice and soft. Okay. So take your two colors that you want to marble and kind of put them into a log shape like that. And then we're just going to bring them together and start to twist them a little bit like that. Then we're going to fold them together and twist it one more time. You don't want to mix it too much because what will start to happen is it's all going to blend in and just create a lighter gray color. So we're, let's dust the surface and roll this out and we'll see what kind of an effect that we get here. Hopefully you can see that contrast in the camera. And I'm gonna put my guide rings on just to help me to know how thin I want this to go. Again, if you don't have um, this particular roller and you're just using a regular rolling pin, you want your fondant to be rolled to about a 16th of an inch. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is just cut a bunch of strips. What I'm gonna use to cut my strips is a uh, fondant trimmer. This is available at Michael's and it actually comes with two different wheels. I know if I had this one on, it'll kind of look like a pizza cutter. You can certainly use a pizza cutter if you have one or a pastry wheel. Um, if you don't have any of those things, you could just use even a regular butter knife or your, uh, your icing spatula will work too. And we're just gonna go and cut a bunch of strips don't worry too much about the size. I mean, you kind of want to get them to be the same width. Um, I don't know, maybe about a quarter of an inch. It's really not that important um, as to the, the size. You just want to make sure that they're long enough to cover the width of your cupcake. So we're just going to cut a few of these. Try to get them about the same width, but again, it's not super important because um, messies or <laughs> mummies are not that, um, you know, they're, they're pretty messy. So it's, it's okay if your bandages uh, aren't all looking exactly alike. Okay, that's pretty good. And then again, because I iced this cupcake a while ago, I'm gonna start adhering the strips with a little piping gel. If your cupcake was freshly iced, you should just be able to lay your strips on. I like to start kind of right in the middle there. And then once I get that where I want it, I'm just covering up his eyes a little bit. I'm just gonna take my cutter, or you could use a spatula and just kind of cut that off so it fits the cupcake. 
And you can just start putting these on. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Just however you want to get them on there. You just kind of want like a little crisscross effect. Um, and you'll just keep trimming down your strips so they fit the right to the edge of your cupcake. Usually what I like to do is size them first and once they're the size I want, I'm gonna go back and, and add the piping gel. All right, that's pretty good. If you don't have piping gel and your, your cupcakes have, the icing has dried on your cupcakes, you could always just use a dab of icing um, underneath your strips and that will help adhere them as well. Let's see where I want to go next here. Hopefully you can see the marbled effect in the camera. All right, that's looking pretty good. We'll just add a couple more on top and he should be pretty well wrapped up. Okay, and there is our mummy. Any questions on our mummy? No, um, we've, uh, we've had a couple of questions about, <clears throat> excuse me, how long can you store <coughs> the fondant once you wrap it up and put it in an airtight container? Uh, good question. At the end, I will show you how we can wrap it up well so it will last. Um, if you have leftover fondant after today's project, you definitely don't want to throw it out. It can be reused. If you wrap it up tightly, it will last a good three to four weeks, sometimes even longer. Um, if it's going to be longer than that before you need to use fondant again, you could also wrap it up well and put it in the freezer um, and then it should last you know, a, a few months. You just want to make sure you bring it out to room temperature uh, and knead it well before you go to use it. Um, if you are going to just not freeze it, you don't even need to put it in the refrigerator. It can just stay at room temperature. Okay, okay. thanks, Tiffany. Sure. All right, let's move on to our Frankenstein next. So the first thing we want to do is take another cupcake and we are going to do the rectangle for his head first. This is the one design where we're not going to cover the cupcake first with a circle. The rectangle is so large that it's okay if we have a little bit of icing showing on, um, on the cupcake. So I'm just taking some green icing um, that I've pre-colored. And again, you probably don't need more than like a ping pong ball size. Knead it up first. Dust your surface. And you want to roll it out big enough so you're going to be able to cut about a one and three quarters by two inch rectangle. 
Doesn't have to be perfect, but that's a pretty good size that will cover most of the top of your cupcake. Um, and what's nice about this roll and cut mat that I'm using, it actually has a grid on here. You might be able to see the, the squares. These are all one inch squares, so I really don't even need a ruler. Um, I've just got these lines here that will help me to know the exact length that I need. Just gonna kind of fix that a little bit. I didn't cut them very straight, which isn't a big deal because that might help Frank look a little creepier. Okay, so next we're gonna add his little, um, his little stitches there. Um, I'm just gonna put them kind of in, in opposite corners. And when you're using the, the food writers on fresh fondant, you don't need to press very hard. If you do, what will end up happening is the, the tip will sink into the fondant. Okay. And to attach this, again, I'm just going to throw a little piping gel on the back just because my icing has dried on the cupcake. Okay, then we can give him a couple of eyeballs and I'm using the smaller eyeballs for this. Okay, and then we'll give them a little green nose so you can just take some of your excess fondant and just roll a ball in the palm of your hand, maybe about the size of a pea. There we go. And now you're going to need some black fondant again, and we're going to cut out some hair and his mouth. So for the hair, what I'm going to use is another double cutout set. I've already showed you the round one. We're actually going to be using the leaf cutter set next. Um, same deal, you get six different size leaf cutters, but because they're two-sided with the crinkles on one side and the straight edge on the other, it's almost like getting 12 cutters in the six pack. So I'm gonna be using the smallest leaf cutter to cut out some hair. Um, they're they're kind of like just the ends of the, the leaves. Um, so we'll roll that out. And you don't need a lot of, of the black for this. And I'm kind of just going around the edge and just cutting out some triangles. And you may find that it's gonna stick in the cutter. You can just take either your food writer or your spatula and uh, pop those right out. And again, try to use that straight edge side just because we don't want Frank looking so fancy. I might be dating myself here, but I think this um, Frankenstein looks a lot like Herman Munster for those of you that are old enough to remember the black and white Munster show. <laughs> So you'll probably need at least five or six of these little um, sort of like triangle looking shapes. Well, I'll do one more just in case here. Okay. 
And again, I'm gonna use a little piping gel to place these on. And I'm just lining up the flat side up against the edge of his head. Oops. That one does not want to cooperate. Um, I've got a little cornstarch stuck to my hand, so you might see some of that on the black fondant. That will just brush off with a dry decorator brush. You might even be able to just brush it off with your finger. Okay. Now for his mouth, we're gonna do the same thing that we did with our zombie. And we're just gonna use that small cutter again and do a circle. And then go back and offset it to create that crescent shape. There we go. Now the last thing we need to do is give him the little bolts on the side of his head. So for that, you can use your gray fondant if you've got any of that left. And you don't need a lot here. We're just gonna create a little um, log that's maybe about three eighths of an inch in length. This is probably even bigger than we need here. And then I'm just gonna cut it to create the little bolts. And you might need to reshape them a little bit with your fingers. Throw a little piping gel on there. And there is Frankenstein. Any questions on Frank? No. Okay. Um, we did have a question though. Is there an alternative to doing these designs if you don't have fondant? Um, it might be a little tricky doing this in icing. Um, hmm. Candy clay, if you've ever worked with candy clay, um, that's an option. I believe there is a recipe for candy clay on wilton.com. That works a lot like the fondant in that you would roll it out and you know you could use cutters to cut with it. So that would probably work. You could probably use, uh, mar someone suggested marzipan, which is an option too. Sure. Yeah, you know, if, if you can't get your hands on the ready to use fondant that I'm using, you can make fondant from scratch as well. Wilton has a great marshmallow fondant recipe. Um, check out wilton.com for that. I just like to use the ready to use decorator preferred fondant because it's, it's ready to go. You just rip open the package and you're ready to go. So it's, it's just so convenient and it's a great consistency, especially for beginners to work with um, that, that might not be used to you know, how the consistency should be because when you do make it from scratch, a lot of times you have to make some adjustments to get it to the right consistency that's, that's comfortable to work with. Okay, so the next design we are going to do is our little jack-o'-lantern here. So we are going to need some orange fondant. 
And actually, what we're going to do is we're going to cheat a little bit because our last design is going to be our bat. That also needs an orange circle. So I'm going to roll out enough orange fondant now just to cut out our last two circles that we'll need to cover our last two cupcakes. So I'm going to use a little bit more than I was using for the others. And again, because I'm taking some fondant that hasn't been used in a while, we just want to knead it up, get it nice and soft and pliable. Okay. Remember to dust your surface a little bit. If you're afraid that this might stick to the surface or if it's just getting to be a funny shape and you want to um, kind of adjust it, you can lift it up and turn it like I just did. What you don't want to do, though, is flip it over. Always keep it, you know, with the same side up um, if you do want to change the direction. Hopefully I can get two circles out of here. So again, I'm using my largest cutter. Yep. Wrap up that excess orange so it doesn't dry out. And again, because my icing has dried. I'm just going to add a little bit of piping gel. And you can center both of those orange circles on your last two cupcakes. OK. Next, what we're going to do is give our pumpkin a little vine here. So if you have some leftover green from your Frankenstein, we're just going to take a little bit and roll a very long uh, log here. And I would go um, maybe a little bit thinner than like a pencil or a straw. Um, as far as the length, it doesn't really matter so much. We'll just see what we have here. And then kind of just give it a little bit of a twist. That looks pretty good. So I'll go ahead and secure that on with a little piping gel. OK. Then we're going to give them two little leaves. And again, we're going to use that smallest cutter. And then what I like to do is just for a little added interest, I take my spatula and just kind of very gently indent a little line down the center just to kind of give your leaf um, a center vein. And it just adds a little more, uh, it makes it look a little more real. And then I'm going to take my um, roller and just kind of roll it out a little bit more just to make them look a little more natural. Tiffany, when you're using your dusting pouch, do you prefer cornstarch or powdered sugar in the dusting pouch? It, it doesn't matter all that much. You're using such a small amount. Um, it, it's really not going to change the taste of your fondant that you've used it with. And 
I like to use the dusting pouch because it really does a good job of getting a nice fine powder on your surface versus just trying to sprinkle the powder on with your hands. If you use too much powder, what ends up happening is the fondant will absorb it like a sponge and it'll start to dry out the fondant. So I recommend using this dust and store pouch. This is available at Michael's and it's, it's just convenient because you know once you're done dusting with it, you just twist the top back on and this can tuck away um, for storage until the next time that you need it. Okay, so we are ready to add our jack-o'-lantern's face. So we're gonna need some black fondant. And there's a couple different things that you can do to create his face. I'll show you both. So I'm going to roll this out um, kind of wide because you can just take your knife or your fondant trimmer and cut a strip. And then what I'm gonna do is chop this into squares. And I'm just kind of eyeballing the size here. Once you get your squares, we're gonna go back and turn those squares into triangles by just cutting them diagonally. And then we might need to go back and trim those down just a little bit. And I, I think you'll need about nine of them. It just, just depends on the size that you're doing and how much of a, a smile you want your jack-o'-lantern to have. The other thing that you could do is take your leaf cutter again, that little one, and just kind of like we did Frankenstein's hair, and just go around the edge of your rolled out fondant and use the point of the leaf to kind of cut, except I used the crinkle edge there, hold on. <laughs> um, cut some leaf points, and that's almost the shape of a triangle as well. I mean, it's going to give you smaller ones. So that's an option too. I'm going to see if we can just work with these that I've cut. Um, and I like to kind of plan out my face um, on my surface before I add it to the cupcake, just to see if I need to do any trimming of my pieces here. That looks pretty good. So now we will just take our decorator brush again and throw some piping gel on. And actually, we might just go with a smaller smile here because this cupcake is a little bit smaller than the other ones. It's actually, I want to turn that around. Okay, and there is our jack-o'-lantern. Are there any questions on that? Nope. All right, let's move on to our final design, which is our bat. 
So we've already got our cupcake covered in orange. Um, you'll need a generous amount of black because we are gonna use that large round cutter again to cut out a large circle. So we're actually going to use the circle to make his wings. And then you'll also need the smallest round cutter as well because we're going to need a, um, a small circle for his head. So you can actually go ahead and cut out one small and one large circle. Keep your small cutter handy because we are going to need that again. So for his wings, what we're going to do is take this circle and just cut it right in half down the center. And then what we're going to do is form the little scallops here on the bottom part of his wings. And to do that, we're going to use that same small cutter again. So what I like to do is do my center cut first. So kind of position the cutter so it's about halfway um, and you'll just cut out a center there. So now it looks like a rainbow shape. And then you're going to do that again on either side. So there's one wing. And then we'll do the same thing here. Again, if you start in the center, it's just a little bit easier to make sure everything lines up well. Okay, and then what we're going to do is position these so they're going to overlap a little bit here. I'm going to take some of this off. That looks pretty good. I'll secure that down with a little piping gel. So the wings are definitely going to hang over your cupcake a little bit, which just makes it look a little more fun. And then you can put that little circle in the center for his head. We'll give him his little eyeballs. And you want the smaller eyeballs for this. And the last thing we're going to do is add his ears. And you can use that small leaf cutter again and just cut out, again, just those top points of the leaf. And they'll sort of look like a, a triangle shape. It might be hard for you to see the ears. I'll lift up this when I'm done um, so you can see better for the positioning. Oops. Get down there. So hopefully you can see that. Yes. Okay. Any questions on our bat? No. 
Okay, let me show you how you can wrap up your fondant so it will stay nice and fresh for your next project. So what you wanna do is take a little bit of vegetable shortening. Um, I actually have a little bit right in here. Roll your fondant, your leftover fondant up in a ball and you wanna make sure that you're using the white vegetable shortening. Don't use that butter flavor because that has kind of a yellowish tint to it. And if you use that, it is gonna change the color of uh, your fondant, especially like a white or a, a light colored fondant. So you just wanna give your ball of fondant a nice little light coating of shortening. That's gonna help lock in the moisture. Then you'll take a piece of plastic wrap Wrap it up tight, and then you'll want to give it one more layer of something. You can either put it in a resealable bag, or you can put it in an airtight container, and that should last for several weeks. Fondant doesn't really go bad. It's more that it will start to eventually dry out on you. So um, as long as you, you know, put some shortening on it like I just showed you and wrap it up tightly with those two layers, it should last for, like I said, about three to four weeks at least. Um, and you know, you just open it up and try it. If it seems a little bit dry even after you've kneaded it, then it's time for a fresh pack. Okay. Can you show all of the cupcakes again? Sure. Okay. So I hope everyone had fun with these designs today. Any other questions come in, Karen? No, you did a great job. Okay, well, great. So I hope you guys enjoyed this today. I am actually going to be back doing another class on Friday, October 16th, same time, 12 Central. And I'll be taking you through some different types of bakeware that Michaels carries to help you make sure that you're picking out the right bakeware for your project and your budget and your skill level. And then I'll also have some treats that I have baked using that bakeware. And I've got some some other cool Halloween designs for those treats, as well as some uh, fall themed uh, treats. So I hope you'll join me for that. Um, don't forget that today's class will be posted on michaels.com, so you will be able to go back and watch if you missed any of the details. Um, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope I'll see you back here on the 16th. And I also want to take this opportunity to thank Michaels for allowing me to be here. And also Karen for helping with our questions today. Hope you all have a great weekend. And whatever you decide to create next, I wish you sweet success with it. Thanks, guys. Bye.